welcome to the start of your brush lettering journey. My name's Lou Collins and I've been lettering since 2018 and I found it to be such a useful skill to have as well as being relaxing and fun. In this introduction video I will run through the very basics of what brush lettering is, the tools and materials you will need and how we form letters for the brush lettered look. This tutorial was initially filmed as a live workshop but I've broken it down into smaller segments for you to dip into. The next videos will take you through various stages of forming and developing a beautiful hand lettered style. These will all be uploaded over the next few days. Please remember if you enjoy this tutorial to subscribe to my channel for more lettering and paper craft videos. Now let's get started. I've given you some files in the group. Um, it doesn't matter if you didn't get a chance to print these off. That's, don't worry about it, don't panic. It's just helpful if you did, but you can still um, use these or you, we can work in the same manner without them anyway. So we'll be bringing those in later. Hopefully you've got some uh, plain paper and that's all I'm going to be doing all my examples on today is just plain paper. Um, the essentials you'll need is obviously a brush pen. Now there's a billion of them on the market. Um, I've literally got hundreds of, I've got another box over there and another tub over there. I will be chatting away about the pros and cons of a lot of different brands for you. Um, this is just one that came from China. I don't know why I've grabbed this because it's black probably. It's a large brush pen. So I'm going to be working with large brush pens today um, just because it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. A lot of people, once they've learned the basics and they sort of know what they're doing, they like to come onto a small brush pen and they look a little bit like this, they're much tinier, but they're just as flexible and there's a lot of brands. I could, at the end, I'll run you through a few brands because a few um, people actually find they prefer them afterwards once, like I say, once they know the basics. Um, hopefully, like I say, you've got some paper I use for my practicing. It's just plain white paper. I don't want that to strobe on the camera, but I just use navigator paper. Um, the reason being, it's super, super smooth. Now, the way they get it really smooth, it's to do with the manufacturing process, but basically the fibres in the paper are compressed really, really tightly. It's made for printing on, so when it goes through the printer, because the fibres are so tight, the print ink doesn't soak into the paper, but it almost sits on top and that makes that makes it really really smooth and that also means that our uh, fibers on our pen are not going to get disrupted by the fibers in the paper because they're so smooth so navigator paper is ideal and the cheapest uh, way of practicing um, beyond that a vellum is great to write on you can buy pads uh, for example there's a brand called Rodia R H O D I A I I with something like that, <laughs> um, and they are brilliant for writing on, but they're not cheap. So um, I would say stick to something like a Canson, Canson, a uh, Bristol paper, smooth Bristol smooth is a lovely thicker paper for you to do your nice pieces on later on if you're not using watercolor. Um, but Navigator paper, A4 Navigator paper for your printer is perfect for practicing on. Now, pen-wise, um, I'll show you a few of a few, just a few of my favourites here. Just a few hundred of my favourites. There's just two brands in here, and they are a Karen marker. I think you can get these on Amazon, but otherwise, um, you actually I ordered them directly because they don't, they come from somewhere else in Europe. Um, absolutely beautiful pens. And then I've got Ecoline, which is by Royal Talons. These are all big brush pens or large brush pens. Um, a very common brush pen for people to start with because they are reasonably inexpensive, in fact I'll bring the whole tub in, uh, is Tombows. So I'll be working with these a little bit today as well. I've got all the different colours, but um, there's also blending pens in there. So I'm going to run through a few different things. I'm going to be working on how we're forming letters. So looking at letter formation and looking at how a brush lettered letter is put together. Um, so we're actually looking at uh, faux lettering and we're going to look at baselines, uh, ascenders, descenders, just so we know what they are. So we've got that knowledge for later. Uh, we're going to be looking at our basic strokes, which is this one here. But this is, like I say, this isn't essential if you didn't get a chance to print the guidelines off. We can look at that later. Uh, we're going to look at doing the full alphabet in brush lettering uh, and I'm going to show you a few different variations for different letters. 
Hello, Laura. Uh, so you're new to lettering. You've tried a little bit in the past, but not very successfully. That's fine. Let's see if we can debunk some of the um, some of the things there that might be stopping you from progressing today. Then we'll look at some flourishing, how we how we add flourishes to just individual words for now. Um, I've got a few different techniques for that and we'll pra practice a few things. Then we'll look at shadows. Uh, we're going to look at how we're spacing our words out when we write a brush lettered piece. Uh, and then another bit at the end, we're going to do some colour blending, show you how to get different effects of colours throughout your brush lettered, um, brush lettered words. But I just want us to understand how a letter's formed. Now, if I just draw a couple of lines on my sheet here, like so. So, if these are the two lines, if you imagine you're at school and you get your lined, um, your lined book, you'll have this will be your baseline. This is the line you'll write everything on. All your letters will sit on this line, okay? And then the next line is the X line up. Now, your letter, the main body of your letters, will sit between these. So, for example, here's your A. Okay, so that's the main body. The same with, say, a B. So it will sit between there. So we have our baseline and our X line. Now I might refer to these throughout the next couple of hours. Okay, so just so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the only other two points I'll make is your ascender is the element that goes up. So we do have, I don't want to get too complicated, this is your ascender line. This will be your descender line, okay? Uh, and with various different styles of lettering, you will get different gaps between them. But if I was to do a G, of course, the G would come down to the descender line, okay? So that's your basic formation. Now, when we're brush lettering, we don't keep the lines all the same width. So you probably know we have thick lines and thin lines. Now the thick lines will always be the line that's going downwards. So what I'd like you to do just for a moment, and you can use your own handwriting, is just sketch out A, B, C, D, E. Don't worry about doing them as large as these. Just be conscious of when your pen's going down. And after each letter, so once you've written your A, go back and add in a double line where your pencil was going down. So what you want to do is retrace over that above so obviously don't touch the paper once you've written your letter go back over it and just say okay so my my pencil went down there so i'm going to add a double line there tapering it off at the top and bottom my pencil came up so that's a single line there and then just here my pencil line came down so if i finish that off so we've got a double line there that's then going to start teaching you to think about where those thick and thin lines are so if I just continue with, I don't know why I've done A, B, G, just to show you the descender, but my pencil went down there and I'll taper that off at the bottom because I'm then coming back up, single line, and then I'm going down again. So that will be a double thicker line, like so. Okay, so whenever your pen is going to be going downwards, we're going to be make, creating a thicker line. And it's a good idea to actually practice this faux lettering because of course with faux lettering, uh, that will get you into the idea of where your thick lines will be. It will start to become completely natural. Um, now I've got a few sort of disclaimers as such. Uh, brush lettering is nothing more than practice. There's no one who is naturally good at brush lettering. There's no one can pick it up any easier than anyone else. It's really as much effort and practice as you put in. Now when I first started, I was doing probably 10 or 15 minutes practice a day that would be starting off with a couple of minutes of strokes because this is uh it's um what's the word muscle memory there we go got it in, in the end i wish i'd remembered that now <laughs> muscle memory um muscle memory is obviously when you're pressing going downwards with your pen you'll press down when you're coming up you'll you'll lighten the pressure now with this we find the lighter pressure is harder and to start getting it so it's not shaky, that is going to take practice. And I'd love to do a two hour course where I say to you, by the end of these two hours, you are guaranteed to be able to brush letter. That's never going to happen, but this is the basis for you to come away 
and then uh, practice in your own time. So just looking at the letters, we know where our thick and thin lines are going to start going and then practicing alphabets and really concentrating on where's down. Now, even with a pencil, we can do lettering of a similar sort, not, not with a brush, obviously, the pencil doesn't have a brush. If I just flip to the other view for you, okay, let me get this nice and close and zoomed in hopefully so if I was to do a an A I would still press down hard with my pencil and up up lightly with the upstroke and then press down with the thin stroke and I can still get if I lift that up hopefully that will focus okay I still get although it's very very subtle thick and thin lines okay so even if you're sitting as well as say on a bus but that's probably a little bit um, wobbly for you but if you're sitting somewhere waiting and you've got any access to a pen, it could be a ballpoint pen, a pencil, uh, a feather quill, whatever it is, you can be practicing thick and thin lines in one form or another. Part two of this video tutorial can be found on my YouTube channel and that's where we actually start to learn how to form the brush letters. Uh, the links to many of the materials that I've mentioned in this video can be found down in the video description. I look forward to seeing you in part two.